Welcome to Rational Alchemy, though we should probably be called Rational Single Payer Health System. What you say, not again. Yes, again. And it's really important <laughs> that you watch this video because Sarah and Bill, my two guests today, are going to explain why. Let's do some introductions. Sarah. Nigel, thanks so much for having us. I'm Sarah Wright, and we're with Colorado. This is Bell Semple. We're with Colorado for Universal Healthcare. And our mission is simpler, guaranteed, quality healthcare for all for life. Perfect. Bill. Yeah, Bill Semple, and I'm the board chair of uh, Colorado for Universal Healthcare. And uh, it's that mission statement that Sarah said is what keeps me going. Absolutely. I can fully, fully understand that. Mm. So let's get into this a little bit. I did to do some notes here on uh, the National Health Service in, in Great Britain. Why is it so important that we really desperately do need this kind of system and get rid of the insurance companies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Um, Bill, take the question. I'll, I'll start with it. And uh, we've got a healthcare system where the Affordable Care Act has made some significant changes and helped some people, but we still just, we spend way too much money and more and more people are underinsured. So we really don't know what our healthcare expenses are gonna be. The majority of bankruptcies in this country are due to healthcare. The majority of debt is due to medical expenses. We don't have to do that. Oh, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Americans totally. are, are, are more afraid of the cost of getting sick than they are of actual illness. Yeah. And folks I know are, what will, will, won't take an ambulance, you know, they won't go get health care. And when you're hurt or injured and, and, and everybody is vulnerable in these human bodies, you know, I work out, I feel invulnerable some days and <laughs> then I get a little injury and I, and I know we've all had that experience of suddenly needing help from a, from a health care provider. That's why people love nurses. You know, mm -hmm. all of a sudden mm -hmm. you're, you're in a car accident and you're, you're terrified and you're hurt and you need help. And you know, what's the first thing people hear in the, in the hospital? Emergency room, you know, well, where's your insurance card? Right. <laughs> and you know, they're all focused on, on getting paid. And so I just want people to take time to imagine, really imagine what it would be like to have a health, in, to have a healthcare system in this country that was focused on all of us being as healthy as possible and our communities being as healthy as possible. Right, one of the concepts of the National Health Service when they were first looking at this back in 47, 48, mm -hmm. was this very important line, a health service based on clinical need, not the ability to pay. Well, and that is the one thing that our healthcare system in the US does very well. It makes healthcare very expensive. Yes. And it makes a few people very wealthy. It does that very well. And unfortunately, the rest of us end up clinging to whatever scraps we can get from it. But we can do that. We can do much better. Right. Plus, plus I don't think people realize that over here that with health insurance, it's a tiered system. And depending on where your health insurance sits in the tier will depend on what sort of coverage you really have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say people, you know, they love their health insurance till they need it. <laughs> and um, the, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that the health insurance companies make money the more health care they deny. Correct. And so the incentives are just are just wrong. Like so we already spend public dollars in this country enough to have a universal health care system. And then we spend a bunch privately on top of it. Yes. And so we can do better. We should do better. Um, it's really important. I think that people have stopped believing that it's possible, mm -hmm. but we do, we do public good in this country all the time. We decided to have the internet and we did that. We decided that we want roads, we did that. And in fact, it's our public dollars that fund universities to research and develop medications. Right. It's not pharmac the pharmaceutical companies, it's our tax dollars. Yes. And then they take the money and charge us a gazillion dollars for it. And they don't care who dies because they're, they, they just want their extra yachts, you know? Absolutely. And so, and so it's time to 
to get the middle people out that are just leeching off the system mm -hmm. for profit alone and take back our health care yep. in this I country. Mean, the, the big drug companies, if they really wanted to spend a lot of money on research, they could. Stop advertising on television for drugs <laughs> that no one knows what they do. What am I meant to do? Run to the doctor and say, should I be taking this? <laughs> Ask your doctor if early death, premature death is right for you. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> I'm going, to, I'm going to make a note of that one, Bill. <laughs> okay. uh, one of the things, in the, over the last 40 years, the number of physicians in our country has about doubled. Yes. And with the population, that sounds about right. The number of health administrators has risen by a factor of 30. Wow. And that speaks to the problem that we have, that, that we need to simplify how we pay for care so that the focus can be on our care. It's just wasting money, isn't it? What, our money. Well, they've built a maze. It depends who you're talking to, but yes. Yes. <laughs> they've built a maze between mm. us and our doctors mm. mm -hmm. where they can say no and the doctor has to fight to get you approved for the care that they were trained. Correct. But then also for you to try to get them to pay your doctor and they made it complicated on purpose because they know that if you have cancer, your, your, your wife has cancer, your kid has leukemia, you're not going to have the time and energy to fight the maze, to, call, to make the 20 phone Correct. calls, to fight mm -hmm. for your rights, and they know they're going to win. So, yes. so I don't know, I'm not sure why this isn't a no-brainer for us other than we've been basically convinced to fight for each other that like why am i going to pay for someone else's health care like like it's i'm going to lose what i have it's it's like well why are you going to pay for someone else's road like because that's right because we all drive on the road and it yeah. benefits all of us to have a road <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the what you're actually trying to do to solve this problem what you're hoping to accomplish here in colorado we had legislation about four years ago that uh, compared how we pay for health care now to a universal multi-payer system and a single system. And that showed that actually we can cover everyone, spend less money, have better health care, and even boost our economy. But there's only one way to do it, and that's by having a single publicly funded, privately delivered way to pay for health care. The last couple of years in the legislature, we've tr tried to get, we've uh, worked in supporting a bill that has looked to analyze what a single payer system in Colorado would look like. Okay. And, and, and how, could it work? I mean, because we, we really don't know. Can a single state do it? We don't know that for sure. And so we need to look at the feasibility, the fundamental feasibility of it. Uh, you know, how you would fund it. Uh, could long-term care be included in that? I mean, that's how we impoverish a lot of people in this country mm -hmm. and in our state. Uh, so uh, we, we need to look at that because there would be real savings by having people get care at home. Yes. So they wouldn't have to go to the ER or the or, whatever. or, or a nursing home. Whatever. Uh, so there are a lot of questions like like that that need to be addressed. And so that's one of the things that we're doing is, is looking to analyze what a single system in Colorado would look like. Okay. It's actually a representative Karen McCormick mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. of Longmont mm -hmm. and Andrew uh, Bazenecker are the two representative prime sponsors. And the bill is called the analysis of a universal health care payment system. And uh, there's also two prime sponsors in the Senate, Janice Marchman and Senator Sonia Hawkes-Lewis, who Excellent. used to be a pharmacist. Um, so, and it's looking at 10 essential benefits to a universal health care system and, could, and, and how it would impact all these different stakeholders, mm -hmm. every socioeconomic group small business, large business, um, the hospitals, the even the pharmacy benefit managers, uh, bless their hearts, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, well, <I> mean, no. <laughs> um, just how it would work, how it, who it would impact, and how there's a racial equity impact analysis, because right now there's really problems with um, different outcomes depending on the color of your skin in mm -hmm. our healthcare system in the US and in Colorado we're no different we should you know we could be right yes. so it's it's looking at what's possible we we envision everyone having comprehensive health care that includes dental hearing vision and mental health um, we envision 
healthcare decisions being made again by patients and their providers. And there's much more to these 10 essentials, but we want to know if what we imagine and envision is possible, how it's possible. Because honestly, everyone who's working hard to make this happen actually only wants it to happen if it would actually really work for all the people in Colorado, the rural right. communities, the rural hospitals. Like, we don't have an agenda if it's not good for everyone. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Talking of rural hospitals, would they benefit from this or, or would it hurt them? Oh, well, right now we've, we're losing hundreds of hospitals in, the, in rural parts of the country. Oh, really? Uh, they, they just, it's really hard to make a go of it. Uh, so this could be a lifeline for the rural hospitals in, in Colorado. Those flight for lives, when I was a kid, the, the helicopters, like if you, if you fall and, and you break several bones in the mountains, you know, mm -hmm. those, those flight for lives used to be part of regular health care. Now, that's an extra private, you know, $60,000 and up right. bill for people. I mean, and, and it's just, you know, when you're in that vulnerable position and you're scared, you know, it's sometimes life or death. Yes. You're and when we're seeing healthcare as a public good, rather than something that we each individually need, adequately funding rural hospitals right. makes sense. Uh, funding primary and preventive care, that makes sense. Yes. Because that, that's good healthcare. And right now we have disease management that focuses on specialty care. That's, it's, it makes people money. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not as good health care that, that we need. Right. And, you know, we talk here of, of good health care. It's really important that everyone is treated equally to start with. Mm -hmm. But let me add a little sub subject to that. National Health Service. People seem to be under the impression that you cannot get private health insurance in Great Britain because of the National Health Service. Untrue. Mm -hmm. You can. Mm -hmm. If you're very, very wealthy and you want to get private insurance as well to go to a private hospital, you can get it. And the interesting thing is, is when I looked up the cost, typically it's about $300 per month per person. So even then, even privately in the UK, it's still a damn sight cheaper than it's going to be over here mm -hmm. for your out-of-pocket mm -hmm. expense. I think people don't don't realize what it could be like to live Correct. with universal health care. And, um, you know, you, what, 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 is it, what was it like for your aging mom? Mom passed away when she was 94, but, but when she was uh, 87, she had had a hip replacement. Unfortunately, about 87, when she was 87, 88, it broke. And she had to get to Lymington, which is about 20 to 25 miles away from Ringwood, where we lived. Ambulance turns up at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, two gentlemen get out, they, they wheel the, uh, the trolley in, they put mum on the trolley, they take her out to the ambulance, they take her down to Lymington. She gets to Lymington, first thing that happens is, is have you eaten Mrs. Abe's? Oh, a sandwich would be nice. They bring her a sandwich. <laughs> She'd then go and have her x-rays or scans, whatever it was they were doing that day. Finish, back in the ambulance, taken home, brought mm -hmm. into the house, put mm -hmm. back in a chair. Cost, nothing to mum. It was all covered. And that's what and, we're looking and, and for, is one, a prepaid uh, system. And, and there was one other mm -hmm. thing that, that I think is also important. Mum couldn't walk. She could stand up and twist round to use the uh, <coughs> toilet, but she could not actually walk five mm -hmm. or six steps. Mm -hmm. Very, very difficult. Calls the surgery in the morning, doctor is visiting at one o'clock in the afternoon. Still doing home visits. Ah. Ask, ask for a home visit over here and you are gonna get laughed away. <laughs> but you have to understand that some people, it's re a requirement. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and you know, uh, public community-centered health is done really well in some of the countries with universal health care, mm -hmm. like the Costa Rica. And it, there's, a, there's a real opportunity there to mm -hmm. meet people where they are, to meet them with what they need. Yeah. And, and when, our, when everyone in the community is healthy, we're all stronger, fewer um, you know, sick days. The person that's fixing your car or giving you breakfast at the restaurant, you know that they're well. I mean, that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. <laughs> we like that. We like it when the community hmm. is, is well. <coughs> I agree. Senator Paul Wellstone had a good saying back in the day, and that was that 
we all do better when we all do better. And that's true. And that's true in a lot of ways, but especially in healthcare. And Absolutely. so that's why seeing healthcare as a public good really just makes good sense. Yes. People yes. are precious and we're worth investing in, each and every one of us. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think people realize, really realize, that healthcare affects the society rather than the individual. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, obviously, yeah. it does affect the individual, yes. but exactly. it, it really is looking after the whole of society that's important. It's like vaccinations. Don't get me going on vaccinations. Okay, we won't. If, if, I, was, <laughs> if, if I was in power, I would enforce vaccinations. Look at the problem we're having with mumps. Mumps is now making a comeback. <laughs> Polio has been discovered again. I thought that died out 61, 62. Nope. It's coming back. Well, it's an interesting issue that people are afraid that a single payer system would be government controlled health care. And that's actually not what we're talking about. That's correct. Yeah. We're talking about, because right now we have insurance company controlled, controlled health care. That's who's deciding and, who gets what. Yeah. And so you, can you choose who your provider is? Um, yeah, if you want to pay out of pocket. Uh, but with a sing single system, we would all be free to choose the provider that we want. So there would be more, actually more competition among providers than now. Now we really limit competition. Yes. And that should be un-American. <laughs> yeah. It's really, it's really a publicly funded, but as you said, privately yeah. delivered. Talk, talk, talking hmm. of the funding, how would this be, in, in your ideas, how hmm. would this be funded? Well, that's part of what the bill's going to determine. Okay. But there's, there's, it'll be based on premiums and the ability to pay, um, and then there's, it's an enterprise through. I have be, the bill in front. There'd of be it. an enterprise that uh, would be the single um, entity that would pay for for for, for health care, and so be be paid. You would pay in based on income. Mm -hmm. So some people, a few people, would pay more than they are now for premiums but they would be guaranteed health care. And most people over their lifespan, you know, so they, you know, they yes. start off not making too much money, they would be covered. They make a lot of money, they would probably be paying a little bit more, but maybe only 10, 15, 20% of people would be paying more. That's one of the things that we want the study to, to right. analyze. Right. Um, but, but, but it's also important which be guaranteed. they may be paying a little more, but they're now getting full coverage. Absolutely. And guaranteed. guaranteed. Yeah, and guaranteed. There is no arguments about, well, our policy doesn't cover that. Yeah, or right. because there is no policy. Right, the policy is keep people the, healthy. The policy and provide is them the care they need. It's all covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and take think, care of people. That's the policy. And I, I, you know, I think people need to understand that as well. Because yeah. I was amazed. Twenty-one million Americans are uninsured. And it's, more, more are underinsured. And, um, and, that's, and that's not talking about the underinsured. <laughs> and so what we're talking about is a prepaid system, basically. Yes. So that you pay your premium, you know, yeah, you pay it based, on, based on your income. But then when you need health care, the question is, isn't how can you pay and how much is it going to be, God forbid. It's what, what care do you need and what and care do you not need? Right. That would be the question at the time of service. And when people are, when it's people's employers, first of all, I mean, imagine if you're an employer not having to figure yeah. out each plan each yeah. year, that whole nightmare. Um, but also American, um, you know, employers, employees are put at a competitive disadvantage because they have to pay for health care. It's a huge expense for counties huge. and cities and school yes. districts. Um, to, to pay for health insurance, and those costs go up every year. They go up for the teachers, they go for the, the firefighters and the That's county right. employees and everyone else, mm -hmm. and for the employer, and it covers less and less. And you know, then then like if they're competing against another country, that those people are all just covered. Imagine if everyone you wanted to hire already had health insurance. Right. Right. So so and then there's this whole job lock where people are stuck in jobs they hate and they can't move around because right. they need the insurance. People, we've talked to people who have stayed in abusive relationships mm -hmm. for the health health yeah. insurance because they had a sick child. There's also people that haven't gotten married because of health care, and I don't know the ins and outs of that, but it's, it's <laughs> literally controlling people's lives. Right. It's just, it's just messed up. I, I of course, am very pro-national health service because of my open heart surgery when I was 12 years yeah. old. Mm -hmm. Yes. I spent 50% of my childhood in hospital, according to mum. 
Mm. And uh, she kept quite a, a note of this and uh, had open heart surgery in 1963. Uh, my life expectancy at the time was 18. If I'd have been born in America, you'd now be talking to the ghost of Nigel. Yeah. Because it, back then, in 63, open heart surgery was still classified as experimental. Hmm. Oh. Which meant that no insurance company would touch it. When you do pass, hopefully a long time from now, will you come back and do a show as the ghost of Nigel? Absolutely. I show <laughs> Absolutely. <too. Okay. laughs> I could think of no one better to haunt than you, Sarah. <laughs> anyway, be before we finish, mm -hmm. how do people get involved in this? Yes, well, they can go to our website, which is couniversalhealth.org, and there's also a link tree that has a link to tons of different ways to get involved. That's link tr period ee -E forward slash co number four uhc. So the other thing is watch for us on Colorado Gives because um, we are you know working to win simpler guaranteed quality health care for all for life in Colorado and the U.S. and we'll take whichever way it comes first. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Bill, any, any final thoughts? Um, well, I'll just say that again. Simpler guaranteed health care for all and for life. If we can change a few minds, that's going to be the hard part. Mm. Unfortunately, it is because it's just human nature to hold on to what you've got. Yes, especially when you're scared, and people are scared about healthy, like Sarah said. People are more afraid of be paying for health care than for being sick. That's backwards. Sarah, final word. The thing to remember is when people are teaching you that this is a bad idea, and you're hearing it's a bad idea. Think about who is paying for those messages because the people who are building yachts off of the healthcare <laughs> dollars that aren't taking care of Americans, mm -hmm. they have so much money to convince Americans that single payer universal healthcare is a bad idea. Just don't believe everything on TV. Oh, <laughs> don't always ask your doctor not when about it, not, not whatever. When it, not <laughs> when it comes to this, yeah. especially because yeah. you, you'll get nothing but, well, I'm gonna say it, bullshit. <laughs> yeah. oh, That's yep. the only way to sum it up, really. <laughs> That's one good summary. Yep. And, and, I, and I have heard an awful lot of it mm. on TV talking about health care in this country. Mm -hmm. Yes. We don't have the best health care system in the world. We don't. We, we, die, we die younger. We have some great professionals who we practice do. and we mm -hmm. have some incredible mm -hmm. technology. But the, but the whole system should be about taking care of people and taking making care of people. us healthy. That should be the, its purpose, not making profit for a few. That's correct. And as you said, when we were sitting before the show, we are the only industrialized nation that does not have a universal health care system. That should tell you something. Mm -hmm. It really, really should. Thank you so much for listening to the show today. Um, as you tell, as I said, Yes, this is a topic that um, I, I do get a little um, expressive about. <laughs> so uh, mm. um, I think it's so, so important. You can get good health care without being ripped off every month by the insurance companies. You really, really can. I'm Nigel Aves, your host, signing off. This is the Captain's Lounge Studios. Adios, and I will see you in the very near future. Thank you. The Colorado Foundation for Universal Healthcare champions a single-payer universal healthcare system such as Improved Medicare for All, the simplest, most cost-effective way to care for everyone. Sometimes states must shine as beacons of innovation. Colorado could lead the way. We're a leading proponent of universal healthcare in Colorado. We also work for National Improved Medicare for All. Everyone deserves healthcare. We at Colorado Foundation for Universal Healthcare will continue our work until every single human has the healthcare they need when they need it.